Who is the greatest wrestler of all time? Some folks say it's Chris Jericho. Ric Flair had a major problem with this. What do you think? Well, we're going to talk about it. Jack, greatest wrestler of all time. Is it well, Chris Jericho? Uh, I, no. Uh, but but here's, a, here's an insight that a lot of people may not appreciate. Neither is Ric Flair. Rick got very, very upset about this. Did you see? He's got a podcast. Did y'all see this, Roddy? Did you happen to see Rick Flair? I've, I've missed where Mr. Jericho, apparently uh, my news feeds do not catch anything that Mr. Jericho says. Now, I'm not saying I'm that not... Jericho said he was number one. No, he didn't. He, no, he hasn't said it. This is he a fan said... thing. This is, is a fan thing that says yeah. that he's number one. So how many fans is, I mean, is it all his fans on there? What is it? Who did this? <laughs> Who did this? Who, who did this this poll? Whoever did it, I mean, made the Nature Boy Ric Flair very upset that, that he that 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 he wasn't being called the greatest of all time, hmm. and he is one of the greatest. But now we're not gonna we're not gonna let the 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 cat out of the bag, and Rodney's not gonna let the cat out of the bag. But Ric Flair did not make my number one list of the greatest wrestler of all time. I don't think he makes Jacks. And he may or may not have made Rodney's. And, and that's not disparaging, Mr. Boyfler, in any... Yes, it is. Uh, well, okay. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> he is in a, a very uh, stellar company, yes. but he does not. Uh, he is not the topper on the Christmas tree. Uh, I kind of felt bad for him because Ric Flair, not only did Ric Flair have a fit over that, but he is having a uh, conniption over the man, yep. which is Becky Lynch. Uh, Jack, what is all that? I heard he wants $20 million from the WWE. Okay. He uh, he does own the trademark for that. Uh, and my understanding was that he allowed them to use that while he was under contract with them. Well, now that he's no longer there, he wants them to pay for it or give up the rights to it, which is what they have done. They have just said, okay, we're just not going to use it anymore because they're not going to pay him. I don't think they've given him $20, much less $20 million. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I just... Uh, Rick Flair is kind of turning into the uh, uh, Disco Inferno, where he just keeps talking and talking, and everybody, <laughs> everybody's picking up on him. Yeah, now, I love I love Rick Flair. I got a lot of respect. Oh, yeah. I'm just joking to a certain extent there, but he just seems like he's saying a lot of stuff just to see what's going to stick on the wall and get viewers to his podcast. There's nothing wrong with that. No. No, absolutely. Rodney, what absolutely. do you think about I, all that? I absolutely agree with Jack. It's all about it's all about getting uh, people to tune into his pod, yep. his cast, his his broadcast, if you will, uh, because none of it means anything. Especially the man thing means absolutely nothing. Uh, and I don't even think they they haven't used that for a long time. In fact, since she's been back, they haven't used it at all. No, what uh, I've seen, but yeah, it's just it's just him trying to get people to come in, to listen to his. His podcast, I believe. Now, don't don't get me wrong. Now, these people now, they, they, they and there are people who would just like to pull and you know jerk his chain by talking about Jericho being the greatest wrestler of all time. Oh, come on. Uh, you know, I could think of you know about well, ten more, twenty more, thirty more. Okay, forty more. No, no, fifty <laughs> more. Well, a hundred and fifty more. Okay, unlimited amount of people that are better than Jericho. I, you know, I just, I just found it, I found it interesting. I don't think Chris Jericho's even made a statement about it, but uh, I just thought it was. Uh, but so uh, Flair has, he has been very vocal about it. Uh, Battle of the belts, AEW Battle of the belts. Uh, they did seven hundred thousand people for yep. their uh, Battle of the belts. Uh, you know, not, not a horrible, not horrible, not tremendous. Uh, what do you think the the Battle of the belts that was done in Florida, which was done statewide in Florida? Uh, different television stations. What do you think those did? 
back in the 1980s, the original Battle of the Belts. You think it did 700,000? I, I think Championship Wrestling from Florida had bigger ratings than they did for sure. So, yeah, I, I think they did better uh, as, far, as far as state throughout the state of Florida, which I believe it also showed other places as well, did it not? I know for Florida, for, for it, it somehow Joe Coff had something. Was it uh, on the Sunshine that Network? Somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody that, that had something to do with that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not for sure what the story Well, is. it's a matter of perspective for today's product those are some pretty uh impressive numbers honestly uh because uh, it was it was a one-off show for a saturday night against the football nfl playoffs uh, i did not watch battle of the belts i wanted to i thought i had my recorder set but i did not uh, you know and for them to do those kind of numbers on a saturday night with everything else that goes on in the world on saturdays i i that was impressive to me. Uh, yeah. Not only that, but Dynamite's numbers were up. Yes. Uh, and their uh, first show at TBS uh, broke a million. Yeah. So uh, they're, I mean, you know, we're never going to, they're never going to give the kind of product that we 100% get behind. <laughs> uh, but they're doing some stuff the right way. You know, whether, whether they're appealing to us as viewers, not so much, but they're appealing to an audience out there. They're finding their footing. And if WWE is not paying attention, they need to be. No. It, what gets me is they're they're doing they're doing over a million people and Raw's only doing which is their which is their big flagship. Time, their flagship is only doing like 1.6. So they're only AEW, which only been in business two years, is only six hundred thousand behind them. That's that said a lot for AEW, and and or, or does it say so little about WWE and the bad, just absolutely bad writing that they've got going on right now? And they're oh no, they're, it's just it's just horrible. It's like watching the same show every week. It, it, they have the same show; they never change. It's like watching a soap opera, and it just keeps on going on for years on years and years. It's just it's you just, know. And, and here's the thing: is I I, I want to like WWE. Just like I want to watch AEW, uh, Raw uh, and SmackDown, even to to the same degree, is just so repetitive because they have depleted their rosters down so bad uh, that they don't have that variety. Uh, I forgot who it was. Uh, somebody was complaining. I think it was Ric Flair uh, talking the other day about how he thought AEW had too many people. Because they rotated people too much off their show. And personally, I think that's one of their appeals. They keep their core group on there, whether it be in uh, videos, whether it be in uh, uh, interviews, or whether it be in matches. They do feature some of their core group on every event, but not all of them, you know, in the ring. But you still see them. Uh, but then you get all this different talent that they're bringing up and they're putting on. And you might not see those guys again for a month or two. And that's okay because they're getting exposure. You're getting a fresh product every time. WWE yeah. is not doing that. How many times have we seen Dolph Ziggler and all that bunch that he's involved with? I mean, I think that that's been going on for months and months and months. I mean, the Usos and New Day on SmackDown, how many matches have they had? I mean, I think I quit counting it, 100. Rodney, what do you think? What do you think about AEW and the ratings compared to Vince's, really? Well, I think that's, I mean, it's, it's respectable. It's absolutely respectable. But I, I noticed in the last few weeks, though, that Vince and the, and the WWE show has really taken all the air, every single bit of publicity out, and it's about their in-ring product, and it has nothing to do with any behind the scenes or a, which is the next WWE star that they're going to sign. It was all about what happened, what's going on in-ring, that's what I've noticed. But as far as there, you know, I would be I would be happy about that uh, with that amount right now, simply because they've been jerked around a little bit on their TV time. Um, and I think Jack's right. It is imperative that you change that talent. You cannot have the same people week in and week out on that show. And it's it's just so monotonous, the same old thing over and over and over again. Um I it, this the one person that I I just wish that uh, uh, they could just get off the show is Seth Rollins. He is just 
just shoved down your throat. I'm tired of looking at him. I, can they feature anybody else? And then the new guy, Austin Theory, they've got him where you don't even want to see him anymore. He's been on there and he's done this. He's he hasn't advanced in any way, shape, or form since he's appeared the first is his first appearance. Um, and like I said, Jack Jack said it was just it's the same thing, but it's um, it's very very um, uh, uh, I think a good thing uh, for AEW and uh, and and it, the new show over on TBS looks good. I mean, if you're if you're starting off with a good big bang, the only thing about it is can you maintain it? And they're in in prior weeks they cannot maintain their their ratings. So, but let's see, let's see some some changes. I understand is going to be made there. And uh, maybe maybe they're moving in the right direction. Well, NXT, uh, Jack, uh, has, some, uh, has some things going on. Uh, got up right. uh, you know, it, it, on. Any, anybody that has watched us over the last couple of years knows how much I have pushed the NXT product as being one of the best programs. <laughs> but since September, when Triple H uh, had his... Uh, uh, heart issues, and he's been gone ever since. Uh, they have basically came in, and for a better lack of a better word, they have just raped the product. They have come in and they have fired everybody for the most part. They're elevating now. I, I love that they're giving new talent, um, and I know several of these young young kids. Uh, I'm glad they're getting a platform to perform on. But a lot of them that they're bringing up are not ready for TV. And just the whole aesthetics, the way it looks, everything has changed so drastically. If they had gradually done this, it might have been okay. But it, it's, I, it's almost like Black Saturday all over again, where everything, all of a sudden, without warning, everything's different. It's like they, they've been filming this in a, in a in, I mean, it's the same arena. But it looks totally different, and I don't like it. <laughs> and now, now they finally just come out. They have basically gotten rid of just about everybody that was on the team that Triple H put together and ran the way he wanted ran. Uh, but they've gotten rid of just about everybody. We all know Road Dog uh, recently got released. Several others there. Uh, our friend Scott Armstrong also got released. Um, and now today, out comes word that Bruce Pritchard and uh, what did I say her name was? Christine L Lebrano, I believe, uh, have not taken control. But from this, from going forward, they're in charge of NXT. So we know how that goes. I thought Chris. I thought the Bruce Pritchard. I thought I'd heard that he would. He was uh, sick for a while. Well, he issued. He issued a statement. He said that this was normal for him to be off towards the end of the year. He saved his vacation time up, so he was off for a couple of weeks for vacation. Uh, I think he said he made a TV, and then he did. He was sick. Now he didn't say COVID. Hopefully that wasn't it. Uh, because he made a pretty quick recovery, but he did miss a couple of more weeks, you know, from, from being sick. Uh, but he said he's fine. He says it's nothing like it was blowed up to be. And I'm glad I like Bruce. I don't always like the stuff that he does. But then again, he's running with handcuffs up there just like everybody else is. So, uh, you know, I uh, can't fault him for anything. He gets blamed for stuff that uh, it's not his fault. No, he's know. just doing what he's told. No. I, I I think uh, I I just read as I came on before I came on uh, that the ever brilliant Vince Rosso has returned and will be the head writer of NXT. Actually, what? it's not. It's Are it's not sure? Vince. It's another Russo, no relation to Vince. Are you sure? Yes. Because if yeah. if it so, if Bruce out. decided to bring in Vince now, Russo, now he's one of the writers. On nope. One of the writers is the infamous. Uh, Well, Cactus Jack's son, Dewey, the one you remember in ECW where they had the signs for Kane Dewey. Okay. <laughs> anyway, that's that's him. Well, I just uh, saw that, and then I guess that's the reason. I, I mean, I didn't read the story. I just saw that. Uh, yeah. A Vin A Vince Russo was going to be there. You would yeah. think they would make him change his name. Yeah. No, I mean, it's uh, 
Actually, it's, just, his first name is, isn't Vince, but it's it is Russo. But they pointed uh, out that it's it's no relation. The spinning, uh, they should call him the spinning toilet. Yeah. Now, well, now here's here's my most interesting. Before we get uh, onto anything else, my most interesting takeaway from everything I've heard about NXT is that nobody is mentioning Shawn Michaels' name. Oh. Now he he had filled in for Triple H as the head guy uh, during this entire time period. Now they're saying Bruce is the head guy, but they're not saying, you know, is is uh, is he still there? Has he been sent home? Whatever. I don't think they're going to cut him. Surely they're not dumb enough to let him go. Because while he may not ever wrestle anywhere else again, just him showing up on commentary for another show or in some capacity, it's, it, that's going to be a big ding on WWE. I, I just, you know, when I when I look at this, uh, uh... It's, it's some crazy stuff going on when you get a, when you get rid of uh, people who who have uh, uh, years and years of experience in pro wrestling to uh, get people that uh, you know that maybe did. And it's kind of crazy. Ring of Honor returns on a, Friday, April the second, I believe it is, and I believe it's I believe it's in Dallas, Texas, uh, somewhere in Texas, anyway. They are they're in WrestleMania week. Yep. So, so they do return. They always do that, and I think they do very well. They they draw off all the people that are in town to watch wrestling, and uh, so uh, so they are returning. Now we don't know uh, anything more than that, but we do know Ring of Honor returning. Anything else, Rodney, going on in the wrestling world? Uh, that was the only well, thing. The most do. exciting thing is to know that uh, the fantastic Tom Phillips is returning to television uh, to going to be the new host of. Impact, we are just so excited about that. Wait, 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 wait. He's moving to Impact? He yep. is going to Impact. Tom Phillips, uh, we all, we all uh, officially call him Obnoxious uh, Tom. Uh, he will be reappearing over there. And I know that since I never watched the show now, I, I'm not going to watch it now either. It, and so it's <laughs> Is there a WWE Impact? They're working together right now, right? Because yeah, that that's that's the other topic I wanted to, the only other topic I had to hit on was that forbidden door supposedly of being open. Of course, this is not the first time WWE has done that. They have worked with Japan Promotions. They work with NWA. They work with Smoky Mountain. They work with ECW. Although I bet it's been a lot of years since this has happened, but they are bringing uh, now former uh, Impact Knockouts champion Mickey James. She just lost the title on the last taping, uh, but they are bringing her in with an agreement with Impact Wrestling. Uh, they have also been talking to AEW about bringing some of the talents over to film documentaries. So there's a lot of speculation out there right now, even speculation to the point that Booker T brought this name up of being a possible entrant into the Royal Rumble and that being Chris Jericho. Now, he claims that Chris Jericho will be booed out of the building because it's a totally separate fan base. Um, love Booker T. I think he's got a lot of knowledge. Uh, I think he's wrong. <laughs> I think it's the same fan base. <laughs> I think it's exactly, exactly the same, same. fan base. Uh, because they knew all the WWE wrestlers. Uh, if you'll remember when they brought out WWE wrestlers, the people went nuts. So they knew who they were. So yep. they, it's not like they were new wrestling fans and never watched wrestling. So right. uh, uh, interesting things. Anything else, Jack, going on in the world of professional wrestling? Uh, that's, that's really about all the major stuff that I can uh, think of that's happened. Rodney? I believe they've got it. Well, that is our news and rumors. <laughs> there may probably some other stuff that we could talk about, but we only have a certain amount of time. To, to be able to do that before our, our uh, streaming service charges more money. And uh, <laughs> uh, thank you all so much for uh, next week. We'll talk more about the news and rumors, what's going on in professional wrestling. Uh, Rodney, I understand Kevin Sullivan may be returning to, uh, to your television. To my television. Yeah, actually, we're sending you a bunch of DVDs, so you watch Kevin Sullivan. So you, oh, thank you. you don't miss him, so you don't miss him. Uh, my my tables are out of out of a line, so that will help level them up. <laughs> we'll see you right here uh, on the next video on Pro Wrestling Inside Now.